God Almighty in His holy and wise providence hath, hath so disposed of this condition of mankind, as in all, all times some must be rich, some poor, some high, and some low. First and hold confrontly with the rest of his, of his world, be delighted to show forth the glory of his wisdom and the variety and difference of, of his creations and the glory of his power in order for these differences for the preservation and good of the whole and the glory of his greatness. Secondly, uh, we to manifest the work of his spirit, first upon the wicked in moderating and uh, restraining them so that the rich and mighty should not eat up on the poor and weak and rise up and the poor should not rise up against the rich also in regenerating and exercising his glory his faith our faith in god love mercy uh, gentleness uh, temptations and in the poor and inferior sort their faith uh, patience and obedience thirdly that every every man might uh, might have need uh, of others and from hence we must work together to bind our a brotherhood affection from hence it, it appears plainly that no man is made more honorable than another and more wealthy out of the particular and singular respect of themselves but for the glory of God therefore God will reserve the property of these gifts to himself as Isaac 16 17 uh, he there calls wealth is gold and is silver in Proverbs 3 9, he claims their services as his dues. Honor the Lord uh, with thy riches, all men being thus ranked into two sorts, rich and poor. Under first are uh, comprehensed all, uh, all such as are able to live comfortably by their own means, uh, duty and proof, and others are poor according to the form of distribution. There are two rules towards towards one another that we follow in this community. Justice and mercy. Uh, these are always distinguished in their acts, in their ob ob uh, objections, yet may be f both uh, concerned in the same subject in each, in each respect. As sometimes there may be an occasion of showing mercy to a rich man in some sudden danger or distress, and also being more, more, mere, ju more just uh, to a poor man in a in hard times. There is likewise a double law by which we re regulate it in our con uh, conservation towards one another. In both, both the former respects, the law of nature and the law of grace. This is the moral law and the law of the gospel. To admit the rules of justice and not properly belong, uh, belongs to the purpose otherwise, uh, then it may fall in, into consideration of, in some particular cases. But by the first of these laws, man, as he is enabled to withhold, uh, withhold his command to love his thy neighbor and himself, upon these ground, ground stands all the prospects and morals of the law, which concerns our dealings with men. In a bit, uh, the ability, uh, this, uh, this ability to work of mercy, the law requires two things. First, the man must afford to help, uh, help one another when they're in distress, and also be willing to go out of his way for others in a time of need. Secondly, uh, that we perform this out of the same affection which makes him ca uh, careful of his own goods. Uh, according to the, to the words of the Savior from Matthew 17, 12, uh, whatever the, uh, thy man should do to you, uh, respect the man. This is practiced by Abraham, uh, by Abraham and a lot in entertaining the angels and the old men in, in Gibeah. The law of grace of the gospel has some differences from the former as in the respects. First, the law of nature was given to man in the state of innocence, uh, thus of the gospel in the state of uh, re re regeneracy. Secondly, the former uh, propounds uh, one, one man to another and some flash in the image of God. This is the brother in Christ also is the communion of the same spirit and teachings that put a difference between Christians and others. Uh, do good to all, especially to the household of faith. Upon upon this grounds, the Israelites uh, were put to uh, put a difference between rhythm of such as were strangers. That uh, thy not of the Canadians. Uh, the law of the gospel uh, propounds 
Uh, likewise, the difference of seasons and occasions. There is a time when Christians must sell all, the, all and give to the to the poor, as they did, as did the apostles during the, during that time. Uh, this is the time we must work together and better our community and spread good faith to the world. Community.
specifically sailed back to England to overthrow King Charles' rule. His rule over the church is corrupt. And I ask some of the men of this community to join our journey there. We need to bring a representative government over there, just like the community here. Over here, there's no, there's no issues or any arguments of practicing our faith. Over there, the religion is corrupt. So we might as well overthrow King Charles' government because he has gone too far with his absolute monarchy. And our, like I said, our focus is to spread our faith around the world. And we should we shouldn't even be worrying about Anne Hutchinson. We should do we should do what God has willed us to do to properly spread the ideas. We should eradicate any signs of evil, evil, which includes includes the rule of King Charles or any other corrupt religions. As a sea captain, I have many ships that control the seas, the networking between countries, so it will be a, a lot easier to spread our Puritan books. And so I leave you today to please join my movement to spread Puritan faith back to England, overthrow King Charles, and sail across Europe to fulfill what God has asked me to do. Thank you and God bless. other things. As a whole, like most of us agree, well, well, the church agrees that they don't want her in the church. Like if she has a little group, I don't think that little group can overpower the community as a whole. She so you don't practice. think it's bad? You said, you said that in the beginning, you don't think it's bad that she has that and you don't know why it's a big deal like, that she I don't even that. see it as a bad thing, as a threat to religion. She could practice her own thing. So you don't. So, so you just don't think we should fight to have her back because there are bigger issues. There's there's no issues. She should go practice her own thing. Like, so she should be allowed to come back and practice her own thing. What do you mean? Are you, are you saying, saying she should be able to practice her own thing in a different community? Well, I'm kind of neutral about it. Like, it's not a threat. Like, she's not going to change our religious ways. Even if she does come back, exactly. But, but, like if it, it were to come down to it, I would like vote her out. Why would you vote her out if you, out. you don't think she's a threat to the, the thing? I mean, yeah. my neutral view is like she's not going to change. But it's not a neutral practices view. Ways so your team, man. So you don't, you don't believe that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what, are you on? Are you on? Are you on their side? He's on our side, but he doesn't. Yeah, but he's still over. <laughs> no, he just doesn't. He just doesn't know he's on I'm, our I'm side, like, but he is. I'm really on my own side. I would like you to step down. I have a question. I would Why like you to step down. Why don't you like King Charles? Because he's because he's an absolute power in the church and he's kind he's of being a dictator the church. He's over not the letting religion. Us practice our Puritan faith over there. Right, he's not letting Sounds people familiar. explore their own paths in the religion, right? I mean... So wouldn't you say that by kicking someone out who's exploring their own path, like Anne, who you don't necessarily disagree with, you just don't want to fight and have her back, when you say that Governor Winthrop is kind of like King Charles, who you want to... I mean, out? think of it as... Think of, think, our, think of our community as as England. They kicked, they kicked us out, the Puritans. They don't want us there. So we built our own colony over here, Massachusetts. Right. It's the same thing. Anne could leave, set up her own She could, practices. but if she didn't do anything wrong, which you don't disagree, you don't think she did anything wrong necessarily. It's basically 
Like, so if why you should she have to leave everyone she knows and everything she's used to if she didn't do anything wrong? And just because one person that's charged, that's one person's opinion, though. Well, it's basically if you don't want to practice like our traditional ways, you can go make your own decisions. Good. Okay. So, what's your opinion, Lisa? <laughs> it's the same thing. We I I agree with some, but I don't agree with a lot. And what don't you agree? I don't agree with her. Uh, with yes. I don't agree with the fact that you think you're neutral about it. I, I don't. You you are so. Uh, He's clearly not. Like I don't believe <laughs> that you are neutral. I mean, I have my own goals, and that's to spread. I mean, I I, I, I appreciate you wanting to spread our religion, but we are also to go and banish the gov or the what what do you Prince Charles the first King Charles. King. You're asking me to send some of my men from my community to potentially go to war? Something that we don't want to do as a community that we got I away mean, from? Wouldn't you do whatever it takes to I spread Puritan faith? I mean, I think that we did enough as a community by moving across a world to another side to get away from them. Yeah, we also moved away from him because he was pulling everything and he kicked us out. Wouldn't you want like, more like people that involved? And I believe that we can go. I believe that we could bring more people to our community and give them more of an opportunity. But I don't feel that we should go and try, try after we left to go and overpower someone. But if they yeah, disagree like with you, are you going to kick them out? But that's a contradiction. So our mission so, should you should so be it's, like a recruitment wait, instead you, of an overthrowing, right? So we shouldn't just kick people out. I mean. Right? I, don't, I think that if they, like what you're trying we, have, to we have laws and rules that we follow in our community, and we, we're an open door here. If you want to follow our laws and rules, we're welcoming, we're welcoming to more people and more Puritans to be coming to our community. But if you can't follow the rules of our minister, our church, our faith, then it's an open door. Feel free to go down the road to another community, spread your beliefs, and maybe they'll, they'll accept that. But here we... Don't accept that. Wait, isn't his spreading police the same way as spreading her police within the church right now? But the yes. the difference yes. between yes. Right, yes. The, yes. the difference between what she did and what we did are in her. She's a her, woman. Okay. I'm just talking I mean, about not people. necessarily that she's a woman. She I spread faith that. beyond what the minister you're, told her. You want to keep your religion personal to your community, but if he moves on with your religion and moves on to other places, wouldn't they feel the same? Shouldn't they feel the same way as you? About Puritans? Like in general. We're not the only Puritans. I know, but you say he wants to spread it. So that's kind of the same thing with Andrew. She's spreading a different. She doesn't believe in the type of Puritan beliefs that we do with work and faith. I'm She's spreading not spreading this, our same beliefs that we have here. <laughs> So how you you one person are gonna overthrow one of the the most powerful guy in the whole country? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I that's know. why you need your help. That's why you were well, asking for help. I got my business as a sea captain is doing well. 
I got like networks around all over Europe. And we could spread these ideas on the ground. Who, who so would you put in power if it wasn't you? Or if it wasn't him? Maybe the leader here. You. What? So me. What? I'm going to be in charge of England. <laughs> yeah, since you established a colony here, why not? I think this is a radical extremist thought. <laughs> I mean, look, he established a colony Governor, here. Governor, you can take it to vote, if you like. We have heard it on both sides, and, uh, and do some voting. Okay. And I'm going to open up a vote for anyone who thinks that uh, this man should spread our Puritan belief back in Europe. <laughs> and try and recruit and make us an even bigger colony than we and overthrow. are these days. Overthrow. Uh, feel free to raise your hand. And you over, like. Overthrow King Charles to call a parliament and okay. try to over, over, go, overthrow <laughs> King Charles. <laughs> go and, and, and tell them again, strongly. I Come mean, on, let's overthrow like King Charles. It's a parliament. It's a, it's a democratic <coughs> government, something like here. Don't you think Is the people? This colony? In England? No, I'm saying the parliament is a democratic parliament form. Parliament in England? Like Not parliament? <laughs> it's a representative government. The relationship still. As a governor of this community, I think we have great value. But I think with with the way that this community is going right now and the growth and like the potential to spread our, our faith, uh, as a man, I can't fully support the idea of going back and risking the men of this community, maybe leaving some women, women and children with, without fathers, without, uh, without husbands, because in order to overthrow a king, kingdom, it'll have to go to war. A lot of war. A lot of war, there's going to be a lot of deaths. You have the money. And that's not something as a community I think that I'm, I want to bring upon my people. So, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to give it to a vote, and any man that wants to follow you, I'm going to let them go ahead and follow you, but... <laughs> But I'm, I'm going to leave it open to them. I mean, do you think it'll happen over time? Like, I think over time it will happen, but in order for something like that to happen, it's going to take a lot of years and a lot of lives. And in this small community that we have right now, I don't think that uh, I don't think it's worth it. Like we, we just left that down here. If we wanted to fight it, we could have come together as a community before we came to this new world and fought it there. Why did we go across the ocean? set up a community just to go back. Joining, joining the movement, raise your hand. <laughs> I'm fighting alone. Would anyone else? Would anyone else like to speak on on the behalf of their beliefs on this trial? Yeah, I got a reading that? Yeah. Uh, can we go back over it? I, uh, there's, it's come to my attention uh, that a few of the immigrants that joined our community were not 100% honest with everyone. So, so I would like uh, the person, the community, uh, I would like to bring up charges on a few of the immigrants that were voted into our community that lied. Um, there was a drunken carpenter uh, who saw who was seen fondling a married woman to whom he was not married? <laughs> a wealthy merchant who slipped out of church service to keep an eye on his chest of, of treasures. An unmarried cooper who skipped church services entirely and made a point of uh, shunning the minister. A married man who uh, who spoke, spurned up. Uh, all but his immediate family, a young farm worker who told you uh, told you that he was, didn't tell us that he was a thief, a London gentleman who, while standing by the railing, uh, continuously pulled uh, pulled at his hair and said, eventually to himself, "Will I ever be truly forgiven?" A sea captain who made a skeptical comment about Ju uh, Judah uh, to a seaman, and also. I'd like, uh, there's an elderly man uh, who reached into his trunk, pulled out a tiny cat, uh, Catholic image of the Virgin Mary and started to pray to it. Uh, uh, like a, uh, 
Uh, like all Puritans, uh, we believe that praying to statues, as the Catholics do, is ideal for worship. Uh, is I idolatry or idol worship? Uh, worship in a violation of the second commandment. So I'm going to open up the floor to these members who are getting accused, and I'm going to open up a vote for each individual to whether or not they should be banished from our community. Wait, I have a question first. A question. Yes? Have you ever sinned? Have I ever sinned? Yes. Yeah. No. Don't be careful. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. When did I sin? Because in the Puritan religion, we believe that only Jesus and Mary are sinless. So... Oh, oh. Okay, so I guess we all have sin. Right. But so are you kicking yourself out for any yeah. sins you've ever done? You just done? lied to the entire community. No. So sit down. No. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> First thing, I would like to bring her up because I would like her to speak on her banishment. On my bench, but yes. I'll you guys. <laughs> but no, I'd like to open the floor and let the uh, these uh, immigrants explain to themselves why they liked the community and didn't tell us about these acts. Is there a explanation of themselves like, before? They didn't well, explain themselves. Isn't it their job to like confess their sins to God and pray to God for forgiveness? And but also, forgiveness? these are sins that were committed be uh, and not told to us before they try to get into our church. But if you've sinned too, which these are you, different types of things. Either you've sinned or you're Jesus. So, I'm not saying that I'm Jesus. I'm not saying that I'm Jesus. Right. So, 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 everybody sins. So, so you're I'm going to go ahead and let everyone who sins in the community. Everyone, uh, no, I'm kicking out the people the who. No, I'm not kicking out anyone. I don't kick out anyone. I'm opening up a vote. Do you have the sin of adultery? On no, your, I don't. Because 1937 is when that happened. This is 1936. I don't count. It's, 19, it's not 1936. Yeah, it hasn't counted yet. It's like 1936. It's like 1936. So, with the with the charges that I was bringing up, those are all happened prior to them trying to join our church. So, you didn't ask them specifically about those things. They didn't get up and say they were sinful. We asked, we asked they, a couple of them before, like, last last, uh, last court session. session yes. We uh, asked a couple of them about it, and they... Uh, about what? If they sinned? About, no, about these these particular instances. Because you have sinned as well, according to your judgment. What have you done? I can't <laughs> He's a witness. Yeah. He's a witness. 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 He's a and what was your sin? You said that when you got up there, that yeah, you were banned. Yeah, it's on YouTube. You did. Yeah. Oh, it's, on YouTube. it's on YouTube. <laughs> I mean, it's on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> No, he is. 
He's asking us to. No. Well, yeah. I'm asking, you have to take this into consideration too. They lied to you too, whether they're your immigrant or my immigrant. They lied to you as a person. Are you going to accept people into our community I who lie? I mean, you Like, I'm just saying, just, I mean. Just forgive me, but, but just in general, like, the, he, what he's saying is he admitted to the things that he's done wrong in his past and opened up, like, all these things happened on the ship on their way here. This isn't stuff that happened in England. This is stuff that happened while they were trying to join our community. So he was op he we took him in with open arms after he admitted to his sins. We're asking these people why they didn't tell us about these things because they and to lied to us. To God, no, not, not to us. That's why we're different from the Catholic Church. They don't have to go to. There's not a hierarchy within so, the church. So so some of they have thing, to confess to the well, priest. They have to confess to God. Not only that. That's what remember the Cooper? Do you remember the Cooper? Yeah. yeah. One of your members. That, yeah. yeah, he specifically said that he had a family, which the paper states that he does not have a family. Well. He did not say he had a family. He did not say he had a family. He did not say he had a family. He did not say he had a wife. I want to see him. He's unmarried. 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 No, he said he was an unmarried Cooper. Yeah. Wait, no, no, that was him. No, he was Oh, that's Freddie. That's Freddie. He's not here. He who has no sin shall cast the first stone. The first stone. stone. So, so, um, spurn. Uh, it's like, just like your girlfriend, boyfriend. He spurned you. You know, he, he didn't like. He sent you away. So I sent away everyone besides me. Have you? Yeah. The direct confrontation with the Holy Spirit. 
which assures her soul vehemently that her soul has been saved. Have you experienced it as well? Yeah. And if so, has it so conveniently come only after she told you that this experience even exists? If you answer yes to the first question, then how come it was not argument. you to come out and say that you had a direction to interaction with God? Why did you allow her to say it? Surely something so powerful and joyful would be something you would be eager to share with, this, with the church. And if you answer no, then how can you support Anne so unconditionally when you know that in your heart of hearts you are jealous of her experience with God because you have not had it yet? If you answer yes to the second question, well, my friends, I will just leave you with this. If Anne's belief of assurance is really true and really God's way, do you think you would have had this experience even if she did not tell you that it existed? Second flaw in Hutchinson is that she did not come to the ministers with her belief. If indeed she felt that her belief was innocent and holy, why did she not present it to the ministers first instead of delivering such a crucial blow to our church and holding her own meetings behind our backs. Thirdly, Anne Hutchinson's beliefs are solely based on convenience. She believes in, in antonomianism, the belief that those whom God has saved are free from the commanding power of his laws. This means that she has no duty to show her faith in God through good works. While it is true that no matter what works we do, it will have no influence on our salvation, this does not mean that we should not be holy. Followers of Anne will tell you that they obey God's laws simply out of love and because they choose to. But how can they claim to love God when they misinterpret, misinterpret his covenant of works so blatantly? It makes them happy to believe that they are saved no matter what sins they commit in the future. And no matter how much they try to trick you, this only opens up the door for wickedness. Also, Anne says that because she is a woman, she is being condemned. Does she not think we would do the same to a man who claims a complete and other opposite faith to ours? I assure you, Puritans, it is not about gender, race, class, or creed. This conflict is about God. Blasphemy is blasphemy, and it does not matter whose mouth it comes out of, man or woman. Finally, what if none of us ever felt this direct confrontation with God? Does this mean that we are all damned? If none of us were lucky enough to experience the submerging of the Holy Spirit throughout our bodies when a certain verse was read during a sermon, does this mean that God has overlooked us? God forbid if we miss a certain mass of church that was destined for us, have we missed our one and only chance to grasp our assurance that we are saved? The truth is that the only way we can be sure we have been saved is through constant struggle of sin within ourselves. The process in Orthodox belief is as follows. Those who are saved start to feel extreme guilt. Guilt in the fact that Jesus Christ has died for our sins to save us and that we are not deserving of his mercilessness. God notices this genuine emotion in us and then and he then justifies us, meaning he pardons us of our past, present, and future sins. When and only when you are justified, you become sanctified. Sanctification is the process of which God takes your soul because of his grace and makes it holy again. This is where the works come in. It is not because of your good soul that you do the works, but because of the inner workings of God in your soul that leads you to be a good Christian neighbor. But you still notice that you are not without sin, and you are still not deserving of God's mercy. So you begin to panic again, even if you are saved. But alas, through God's grace, you start to find your holiness again, in your thoughts and actions and realize that God has extended his grace to you to make your soul holy again. The cycle continues and it can be agonizing and excruciating, but this is all for the good. While Anne and her followers are sitting here thinking that they are going to heaven because God likes them enough to speak to them and they are doing nothing to prove that their soul is even holy enough to go to heaven, those who are truly saved are constantly working on themselves and making themselves righteous enough to be worthy to sit next to the Almighty in heaven. Again, I reiterate, Puritan, this is solely because of the inner workings in our soul through God. While sanctification can never be complete in a lifetime, you will see the reward of your emotional roller coaster ride with the ticket to heaven at your death. Do not let Anne Hutchinson and her beliefs disarm you of your true Puritan faith. By her simply just saying she felt a message from God and that you did not 
She is saying that she is better than you. I ask that you not take comfort in her message, but that it angers you to become a better Puritan neighbor and a Christian lover. Yeah, can we do, can we finish it in the next class?